All right, if we get, uh, get started, thank you all for coming to our work session. Um, good to see everybody. I have a little word of prayer and we'll get started. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for all your blessings, Father. Um, we ask you to uh, give us wisdom and direct our actions, Father, on uh, what would be best and how to serve our neighbors here who live in Cleveland County. Father, we ask you to bless Cleveland County. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. I have, uh, I was approached by Haven Hester here. Uh, he has a gentleman with him named Mr. Jim Dennis, and they wanted to speak to the county commission concerning, I think there's a, a brochure in front of you concerning the Alabama Association of Rescue Squad. It's my understanding, Hayden, you have spoken with John Daniel, our sheriff, and y'all have discussed this in great detail. And so, come on up, you and Mr. Dennis, and <coughs> speak to the commission. How are y'all doing? Pretty good, sir. I greatly appreciate y'all's time to sit here and speak with us, especially in this busy month of the season. We are looking at creating a rescue squad for Cleveland County, and it will be a state associated rescue squad. And by, by means of that, we will basically have backing by the state association on several different things. Um, we're looking to do land searches, possible water rescues, but the biggest thing is I want all my guys trained 100% on land searches before we do anything else. I want everybody trained 110% the right way. And the biggest thing is that joining the Alabama Association Rescue Squads brings it from the state of Alabama for free training. That, that's a big thing. Free, free, free training. Um, also, I'm trying to get us some stuff, training grants, and also, excuse me, but also equipment to use in search and rescues, water rescues. We're looking at drones. We're looking at, there's a thing called Hotwire that Jim can tell you more about than I can because he has one. And uh, we basically took the old ways of search and rescue and put it in a very new perspective in today's technology and everything else. Cleveland County is a very big county, 561 square miles in this whole county. Even more, I mean, we got we got the Tenhoki Trail, we got Ladaga that goes on the north end, uh, we got lakes, streams, ponds, rivers. We're here to help out with search and rescue. We want to be the difference for Cleveland County. We want to be the person that they call for their loved one, hey, my grandma wandered away from home, okay? Well, we're going to go find it. I want to come back in today and tell the parent or that family and tell them 100% that, hey, we've had your love. Your love is going to save you for the rest of your life. That's the biggest thing I want. One thing that got brought to me in perspective is it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You woke up, your front door is open, your child is missing. Where is your child? Where is your child? And that brings a lot of hope to somebody. Hey, I want my child. I want them back. We want to be that person that brings them back to Cleveland County. We want to work in Cleveland County, and we want to be a volunteer volunteer organization. And we're coming between the commissioner, does it bless them like we spoke with John and Patrick. We want to get y'all's blessing. We want to pursue further avenues to create a rescue squad in Cleveland County for land searches, water water searches in the future. We want we want to progress in that. That's one thing Cleveland County is lacking right now. We need help. And we want to create the we want to create the solution to fix the problem. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim. Jim Jim's a very good friend of mine. He's been the person I've been in contact with all the way from A to Z for the State Association. So you have so you have a search and rescue now? No, we're looking at establishing one. I'm working on the paperwork now to get it in submitted to the state. Um, okay. this will be a rescue squad, not a search and rescue. Yes. SAR. Star Search and Rescue was founded by the Air Force, founded that pilots. Let me let me say this about Hayden. Hayden, you lived here in the county for how long? That's like good, you know that. 2015, 2016. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and you've also been uh, you still work with EMS or you I do? do. I work I work with EMS part time. I'm in Abernathy Volunteer Fire Department as training officer slash captain in Abernathy. Um, I currently work in Career Fire now in Birmingham. My career is public safety. I'm going to make that my career and keep that as well. I just want y'all to be aware of Hayden's, uh, what he's 
Don't look at Don't really not bring that up. We had search and rescue and we went and tried to create funding and everything. But the biggest thing is, and since you're in volunteer firefighter now, you understand now a lot of our younger kids and younger folks to get them involved in it, you know, a lot of our kids move away or whatever they're coming up is, is sometimes, I guess as it was told to us, it wasn't really the funding, it's just the manpower. So. I have, I have re I've reached out to well over 20 people. I have sat down and had private meetings and group discussion with those people. And they are on board and they want to do this. Okay. Um, just like you mentioned, the younger people, a big enticing thing is the Alabama Social and Risk Squad has well over $100,000 sitting in the account right now so that they can join the Risky Squad and be active in the Risky Squad. And we can send them to EMT slash paramedic school and we will pay for their school right there. That money is later provided by the Alabama Association for Rescue Squads. And that was one of the biggest things that they had, you know, with the insurance and the training and all the stuff that they needed. I'm going to tell you this. You're going to love what we have. I'm going to tell you this, but workers comp insurance, where do you find it at $18 a person? Ooh. That's for a year. Any other questions? What uh, Now, you still fall under the sheriff, right? We, we've had a conversation with John and Patrick, and we, we continue to have that conversation. So I look forward to having another meeting with that discussion on this, on um, how we can work work better and create a significant goal. So the sheriff is going to take the responsibility of what you're doing. Okay, you said you're coming to us for our blessings. What else? What blessings? I mean, I'm one, one of the, we look for possible funding down the road, but I'm not talking funding like a fire. Yes, I'm just talking a little bit here and there, um, but also we're our main struggle right now is the building. We've looked at a couple places. I've looked in the city of Ethel and I have not had any contacts back. The biggest thing is we're trying to find something very centrally located in Cleveland County that we can turn out of the station and make a lift, or we can turn out of the station and make a ride and be on either end of the county in equal amount of time. That's what we're mainly looking for. Do you have any kind of estimate of what you're looking at for a yearly budget? On a yearly budget, we're, we're looking at probably right around ten to twenty thousand dollars estimated. Um, so I got phone calls out for insurance and several other things. That budget could be way lower than that. But that's that's what we're just looking rough out on paper a little bit. But we're looking a little bit less, but like say twenty thousand. <coughs> We we would love to throw this out here. We would love to possibly possibly move back into the old SAR building. I know that's just a, a discussion for another day, um, but that could be a possibility. Um, or if we can find a piece of land to build a to build a building. And when I'm talking building, I'm talking it's probably a thirty by thirty with one or two bays, and that's all we need. We don't need ten bays like a gigantic fire department or uh, EMS service has or anything. Like we don't need nothing like that. And y'all will be able to apply for grants? Yes. The state, and he'll talk more about it, the state has a $10,000 grant that they award every year to each individual department that joins the rescue squad. Can any of these be housed with fire department? I would prefer to stay out of the fire department for the time being until we get established and get a well known reputation working. Um, now, in the foreseeable future, I will look at. Let's say we have 500 water calls in Piedmont, I mean in Morton Springs. I would ask the fire department if we can possibly house the boat there since some of our members are from that area, that they can get a quicker response on that instead of us having to come from the center of the county all the way to Morton Springs to the Hawks. I would look at that in the future. Because right now, I think, uh, Kane Creek's the only that actually has. They have, they have a boat that's pulled up that is on by the fire department. What about the training? How long training. will the training process to get these to get these individuals up to be certified? I can have uh, once they start training, I can have them certified for land search. It'll take one full day. It's a 14-hour class. Uh, it involves night search and day search training techniques. Any volunteer firefighters that would like to take it along with the rescue squad. We always welcome their training. EVOC is a another, another day that that teaches that their ability to be able to drive emergency vehicles. Uh, then they also have to have uh, Tim's training, 
which is traffic incident management safety. We teach all of these things for free to all volunteer rescue squads. And there's 54 classes that's available to them. We do FEMA classes, we do a lot of uh, in-house state classes. They're all certified by instructors. It's not somebody just has a working knowledge of it, teaching it. They're actual instructors. Oh, I'm sorry, I kind of jumped again. I'm, uh, <laughs> my name's Jim Nees, but I'm the state training coordinator uh, for the association. I'm over 111 rescue squads in the state. All their training comes through me, all the instructors come through me. And if we have an instructor, just for example, or a squad that is not doing what they're supposed to, we put them on probation, if they still continue, then we remove them. Uh, so we try to keep the bad apples out. I mean, anything that you have, you're going to run across a bad apple or a good apple. So we get the bad ones out of the basket as fast as possible so that we have a good record with it. Uh, one thing that uh, Hayden briefly touched on that brings a lot of ability, when you have a SAR team here, they were pretty much a standalone group meaning their resources were limited. The resources behind the association are unlimited, really. Uh, we have over 3,000 members in the state of Alabama. We have cave rescue, underwater cave uh, divers, dive rescue, drones, three different types of uh, search dogs. We, well, we have uh, air scent dogs, we have track and trail dogs, and then we have water cadaver dogs and land cadaver dogs. Uh, all of them are specially trained for their specific skills. Uh, giving that example of the water cadaver. A lot of times that, you know, people can't understand how a dog can smell a person underwater in a river and stuff. But what happens is it's, it's really a science because the oil off of your skin does not mix with water. It floats to the surface of when you have the dog on the bottom of the, on the boat there. He's sniffing the water, and when he smells the human oil, it puts the body, uh, puts a person or a rescue team within 20 feet of the body. And so it's really kind of unique, and you know, all of it is a science. But believe it or not, that's our last resort because we have other tools that can put us within a foot of the body in the water. On land, to give you an idea of the complexity of searching for somebody on land, Right now, and I'm not knocking volunteer fire department, sheriffs, or anything. Your resources, just like you really can, is stretched thin. If you call the fire department or sheriff out and they're hunting somebody, they get a call over here. They've got to split their resources they have at this scene. Some's got to go here, some's got to stay here. And they may need everybody on this end. So the rescue squad uh, is a gap that covers, I guess, what you call a gray area where both of them are trying to fill a void uh, in between the, uh, what their <coughs> services were intended for. Uh, it's not to step on law enforcement, it's not stepping on the fire, it's working hand in hand with them and filling in that area where that we can take over the search for this person, it frees your people up to respond to other emergencies in the county. Uh, land search, uh, I was speaking with a lady here just a minute ago about the science behind it. A single footprint tells us a lot. If we, uh, once they're trained, they'll be able to take a single footprint. They'll be able to tell you if it's male or female, the height of the person within a few inches. With the uh, weight, they can get within 10 pounds of it. They can tell if they're right-handed, left-handed their stride, which will tell us how much they land they can cover in an hour, so we know how far out to search. Uh, they also can tell if they're trying to evade them. Uh, you get some people in their thing, uh, we had one recently, male altered status, thought we were after him, so he was walking backwards and stuff to try to evade us and throw us off the trail. But they learned techniques for that, and then there's also, you know, it's kind of like cowboys and Indians when it's growing up and everything, you see them reading the leaves and looking at the trees. There is actually a science for that. They will be taught this science so that they can respond and find. If they need help, one phone call is all it would take, and they can have multiple rescue squads of more trained personnel coming in. Uh, drone team, your nearest one right now, 
to be the Edison Childersburg or Randolph County uh, squad wise. And they would come and respond. There's no charter screen in this either. Uh, if, if it was a bad enough crisis here that you needed a thousand rescuers, one call if, if Hazen is the captain, one phone call, and all the wheels are turning to bring every resource to bear that you would need uh, from people trained to collapse structures, uh, land search, water search, drones, caves, dogs. Uh, dive teams, there's a numerous amount that we bring up. I ain't going to look at this. You have a lot of uh, mountainous areas here. You have somebody falling into a gorge. You need them brought out. That's a very difficult and dangerous rescue. And any fire department will tell you it's a dangerous rescue. This is something they would specifically train in. They would learn to work with helicopters. Uh, that way, they would actually go down, take care, and treat the patient put them into a soaps basket and airlift them out to safety. Or if the need was needed, uh, was needed, they could bring them actually up the gorge and take them out that way. So it opens up that avenue. We also run uh, BLS and ALS ambulances uh, in some counties, and it's up to that squad. But I don't know how your ambulances run here, if it's paid service, volunteer department. If the rescue squad, I'm just going to use for example, one to run an ambulance service, they could actually run an ambulance service through the association as well. They could not charge for the individual for the run, but where they would get their funding from is they can build the insurance. And so that's what they would run off of to keep their ambulances going. And there's a multitude of services that's available, the training, I've got 184 uh, instructors currently. I've got another 11 that will certify at the end of this month. So that number goes up. We do a lot of FEMA training. Uh, we are actually in the process now of forming a FEMA staff team for State Alabama through the association. First one in the nation to have it. And that will cover from Texas all the way back to North Carolina. Uh, for hurricanes and tornadoes, you know, very huge disasters is what we will be calling for. And not every squad will be selected to be in that team. It's squads that are in our association that are more in the elite and multi skill. It's, it's cheery pick, I guess you'd say, is to make that team you know, where it would go. But still, it's a very good thing for our state and for our association as well. To, um, to be involved. And this, you need a resolution from this commission. So you need him. Uh, he would need a uh, the support of the commission. They're going to uh, to get into a deck for to be able to get supplies and things. They have to have some type of funding from the commission. Uh, my commission, but they uh, and every, every county is different. Our county, well, in Tidy County, they have a tobacco tax. They take that and they divide it between fire parks and rescue parks. <coughs> so that's our funding there from the commission side of it. The rest is met by donations and funding. <coughs> uh, some commissions uh, just give a flat out set amount of money. So it's really up to the commission of how much they want to give or how little. As long as it's above $500, we can get them into a DECA. This is a program that the volunteer Risky Squad Association is the only one that can get into that program. And what that does, it allows, uh, if they form a Cleveland County Rescue Squad, to go down to Montgomery uh, four times a year. And they have what they call a Monday day for rescue squads. There he would be able to get desks, chairs, uh, media equipment such as his cameras, uh, video cameras and stuff for scenes different types of rescue apparatus and things that uh, is available that is a surplus of the state. He would be able to pick it up, sign it, and it's on a permanent loan. It never goes back as long as they are a rescue squad and in good standing. If they leave the association, then it would go back to the debt. If So there has to be at least a funding stream of $500 and you you would be, he's covered, or this group would be covered under your umbrella, right? And 501c3. They would have to form their own 501c3. Okay. So they have, they have this, they set their bylaws. We do not police 
our squads. Okay. Uh, we're shooting an association of squads that come together to form an association to make things better and work as a group. Do they, does everybody have a 501c3? Or are yes. they under the sheriff? Does it? There are 501c3s, so he, he would have to set his own there. Okay. And they would make their own bylaws, they would their own officers, they would govern themselves, uh, meaning they would have their president right. and vice president, or whatever. That how how they far along are you having that? We are still working on, uh, I just talked to a bunch of people who would be interested in being board of directors. That's one of the things that's holding us up to finish up the five hundred one C three. Okay. Because you have to just abort the record. Right? Okay. okay. Now let me ask you this. Now the other search and rescue squad that was in play, have they actually dissolved? Right. Are you talking? Last time I talked to them, they were still. They had not completely dissolved. Are you talking SAR? What what we had a couple of years ago? Yeah. Okay. That was, Cleveland County Rescue Squad will be totally separate from Cleveland SAR. Okay, it's two different, two different things. Because I knew, I don't think they completely dissolved. We, we, want, to, we want to start, we want to start with a brand new 100% Cleveland County Rescue Squad. We don't want anything to do with the old search and rescue we have. But you, but for you to get established with them, I know that you have to get a 501c3, plus you would need at least a resolution where the commission is giving you at least $500, some sort. A year for, right. you, for you to accept them. For us to accept them. Okay. okay. The equipment that they need to start out with, we can have them acquire it. Right. right. Okay. And take care of that. One thing we also do is uh, risky squads, they're eligible for a grant. It's $10,000 every three years. They can get $1,000 at a time, or they can get $5,000 at a time. And there's no payback on it. All they do is the equipment they get has to be approved by a board uh, with the association. And if he puts in for five thousand dollars in February, he's awarded that in May, then that five thousand dollars worth of equipment would come to the squad, it's theirs, <coughs> do it again in August, get awarded in November. So if he burnt five thousand each time in one year, it'd be three years before he could do it again. But every three years they would get ten thousand equipment. In addition to that, we also uh, do a lot of SD1 equipment, which is when the state turns vehicles in. That comes to us also, and a lot of those vehicles are allocated out to squads that are starting up, needing vehicles. Uh, my squad just recently got an F-250 from them to help with our holding capabilities on ours. Monthly Rescue Squad right now in the from here, they started one year ago, actually this month, they have been awarded a 14 passenger bus, 10,000 equipment. They uh, just delivered last week to them a Tahoe and a rescue boat. So they can be multiple, multiple in counties? Uh, well, uh, we are all throughout the state. There's a Well, I mean, you squads. mentioned Mumford and you're from Talladega. Yeah. So well, I'm on the state side. I, okay, does Talladega have more than Mumford? Yes, we've got four squads in our county. Okay. How uh, many members do you need? How many members for it to actually? Have to have a minimum of ten. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as he has ten, he's good. He, uh, that keeps him in good standing. Uh, the initial cost is fifty dollars for the, his squad to join the first year, and then twenty dollars for each member. If they want the workers' comp, which they would be crazy not to take it for eighteen dollars a year. <laughs> Would be their, that's, only their, that's their only expense to the association. And from there on, it would be $25 a year for their unit and then 20 and then 18 for the insurance. So that takes care of them on that side of the coin. Uh, that's a fixed expense, it doesn't change. And all the training is free. Uh, we do have a conference every year, right currently until 2028. It's in Orange Beach. It's actually coming up in November. If they were a member, all of his his group could go down for thirty five dollars a person as a registration fee. That's three days of classes with family and state training. It has a banquet and a seafood bash and some other stuff going with it. Okay. And then you uh, <laughs> can't go to conference that cheap. Oh, no. And uh, then it's hotel room, which we get at a discount and it's at the. Uh, there's a lot of, it's a training conference is what it is, and then 
This is a little, some other little perks that we have. Every other year we do a cruise, and it's 100 percent tax deductible for each member that goes. So the cruise is, is essentially free because we do training on the boat. Uh, we set up classrooms and stuff, and uh, we went this year actually. Uh, we went to Cosmo and Cancun. It was a week long run. But every day on the boat, we had training classes they were required to go to. So that while they were training on the boat, under the laws of federal government stuff, it qualified as a training exercise. And so they write it off on the taxes, it's free. So that's one little perk. Uh, another, along with equipment, another one is you spoke about young people coming in. Uh, that's always a challenge for firefighters, any volunteer group. One thing we're using to draw is uh, our training that we're having because there's everything from repelling off of the cliff to uh, on a boat to riding horses, doing a question search. There's multiple teams. And then uh, in addition to that, if they would like to be an EMT or a paramedic, they have to be in the squad for six months. Then uh, at six months, if he, let's say he has two that wants to go. The training is like, say, 900 to 1,200 per person. The squad pays that. The person graduates. They sign an agreement with the state that they will volunteer with him for two years. The state writes him a check for all the money he spent, send him to school 100%. And uh, just say the person stays a year and then leaves. He doesn't have to worry about it. He's already got his money back. The state goes after that person for the difference. And so that frees him up from having to chase them. And you know, they because they're not meeting their obligations because they have to sign that agreement with the state. Oh, I just I'm gonna ask you, do you any questions for you, Mr. No. Does the money got come straight from the commission or can the money come from the sheriff? Uh, the money would need to come from the commission on that there oh, for that there. The sheriff is responsible for all searches in his county. And on the water, he is the governing authority unless a lead is present with it as Marine Patrol or it's a navigable waterway and then Coast Guard is over. Now a lot of times, like the Tennessee River is a navigable waterway, Coast Guard is over it all the way up. And they come pretty far in land, but they're not up in North Alabama, <laughs> obviously. So they transfer that power to Marine Patrol with a lead. And then if they're not there, then it transfers to the sheriff. And then the sheriff can turn around if he wants. He can say, you're in charge of this scene. I'm over, you know, I'm awfully responsible. I'm, I'm handing it off to you to, hand, to take care of it while I go handle something else. And um, so. Well, you've done a great job. And I, I think everybody can see it's got a lot of good things and perks. Um, and the commission, I guess, will probably want to ask John uh, in a few minutes when he comes up. And then, do you want to consider if you want to put a resolution together for this uh, upcoming meeting? I have a couple of things. If, if this were to happen, how long would it be before you think it would be functional? I could have them functional in less than a month. Uh, as long as they're willing to come and get the training, I can have them up and actually. If they really can't have it hard, I can have them ready in a week. Do you have a people? I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry. You, have, you have more than 10 people. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 i but we'll continue adding to get them. And one other thing, we have a building in the south end of the county. If you think you'd be interested, if you would contact me. I'll go. Just give me your number when you're done with the whole session thing. You know, all these places we're going to Any other questions? So what you're waiting on is the 501c. We're waiting on 501c. Do you have any other questions? I have no problem with discretionary uh, a sponsor act as long as they have the people and they've got the 501c everything is in line and the sheriff is is going to hand off on it 
if he, yeah, if he's in. How long, yes. How long do you think it'd be on the 501C as far as, uh, <coughs> how quick you need the resolution this month or next month? I mean, I don't need it that quick. Okay. Um, my, my goal is, I want to be up and running by the beginning of next year if possible. I know we're getting to the holiday time and I don't want to get you off and uh, we're having to play tag around Christmas and Thanksgiving and Halloween and stuff like that. Um, I would love to have something started by January 1st of 2025. So you don't, need, or, you don't have to have a resolution this coming month, in other words, but you'll be working on the 501 and let us know. Uh, uh, my, my biggest goal is buildings. That's, that's, I'm trying to find some central located. So are you saying central located is saying within the city of Heflin somewhere? It doesn't have to be in Heflin. I remember the old saw building was right up here behind. Right. I'm just saying mm -hmm. within this path. Mm -hmm. well, um, the reason why I'm saying that, the county owns got property, the city's got property. So on 66, there's some property out there that could be had. And then, then you know, we've got property around the jail mm -hmm. and about the county barn that could be had. If we can find a place to build a building, or if the commission would love to fund building a building, I would love to see if we can get the old building back. One bay, that's all that matters to me, if it's a possibility. I don't know, that's out of my hands. Well, that wouldn't be up to the commission, that would be up to the school board. I think now they got to have full of bullets or something. But that, that, would be, that would be the best out of you. Now you're financial. talking about the plan. Down the old road. The old, the one behind, that must be not the one in front, right? No. Oh, you're uh, talking about the This is the one behind the uh, old uh, road up here with the old commission on We, I actually, so I actually, <laughs> I actually reached out to um, the guy who owns that building. Yeah. And he, he Jack won't, Rafa. yeah, he won't let it. So, he won't, it's, yeah. he got so, 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 so you need 10, at least 10 foot doors and a, say a 40 by 50 bit metal building. I would say at least two bay doors. Yeah. That's what we can get. And, uh, and then uh, once you get up 12 foot, it starts. Mm -hmm. you know. we, we're not trying to fit a fire truck. We're just trying to fit a normal SUV and maybe a possible mini bus if we ever had a natural disaster okay. that we could use it for. And then uh, with the association, we meet four times a year from the join. November and February will be the earliest. Okay. Uh, November at our conference, we've actually got nine squads coming in there. If they put it together before then, I can. I, I'm over the membership as well. I have dual growth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I can come up in state and then uh, get them where they can come down in November, and we can go them in there. If not, it will be February before they can come in. But once they come in, we can get them the training and have them the equipment that they need. So it sounds. Everything sounds very positive. If you'll keep us in touch or keep us in line when you're paperwork and also um, I know the commission will probably talk to John about it and uh, so we'll uh, everybody good yeah all right thank you for your time thank you Jim appreciate y'all coming thank you Haven, thank you all right um, you're good to forward right you're good right now. John, you have anything for the commission? Uh, okay. Hold on, hold on. I was about to add in a position for my organization, which are about past Patrick. Coming up with a job description. So that's what he's passing out right now. Yeah. So this is what we had talked about uh, last week in the budget meeting um, about the position that we're, we're requesting to be added uh, come October 1st on the new budget year. I have also sent this to our HR and she's been looking over it. I don't know if she's had any comments for it. But, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory of everything that they would be handling. Um, basically, like the logging permits, we would help work hand in hand with Lee, because I know it's a, it's a job for Lee, and they would be able to work hand in hand with the deputies, keeping a hand on the logging permit, and be able to work with Lee and Jeannie as well on the logging stuff. Uh, and then the evidence stuff that we talked about, um, and I showed Terry some pictures after the meeting 
of both our evidence rooms. I know Emmett has seen it firsthand, has come over there and looked at it. Um, it it's, we've got a lot of work that needs to be done. And by far, the sheriff and I have sat down, and this is by far one of the most critical needs that we've got right now. Uh, there again, because we're going to lose Clay. Clay's over our guns. We're going to lose him um, coming up quick. And he's training for jail, so we need to be training somebody to take over guns. And without any extra incentive, we're, we don't have anybody that's interested in doing it. it it's just, it's, it's a lot to handle. Um, let me, let me, because of time, Patrick, I, I know everybody's had a chance. Do you guys want to put this on a resolution? Would you like to put it on new business or consent to it? I mean, I'm just going to answer no with this. It's not going to be a big this is not a specialized, there won't be any specialized training. It will help cut down overtime and the expenses as well. Okay. Have, have y'all looked at contract with somebody to clean up that room? It's a chain of custody. And it's too cost. Yeah. We're looking. Okay, so what's this person going to do once that room's cleaned up? It's an ever, every day thing. It's, this don't stop. Our cases don't stop. This is every every week thing. Just like right now, our evidence lockers is full. They're filled up about every week. These deputies are making cases, and every case they make, there's evidence. Yeah. Um, same, same way. way. Or they about minimum them twice a month. They have to go to Uber. Yeah. Carry so this evidence, and then sometimes they have to make extra trip to bring back evidence that's already analyzed. It's going to about the Roger, how that would help us or help leave. So right now our deputies are so are so tied up with answering calls. Like I got explained and I'll try to be as short and quick. I, like I got explained last week, they're running from north end to south end 24-7. Uh, logging permits and going out to logging sites is one thing that we just can't fit in for a deputy to be able to handle because there's just not enough time and once you get out there to a logging site, they might they might have to walk into the site because of the road condition. Lee can tell you that. And so we we just right now we just don't have the ability to keep a hand on the logging permits. And Lee don't have the ability to keep a hand on the logging permits. So this person could. What our ultimate goal would be is to when to work first and foremost, that person would go to them with Lee and is like, okay, what active logging permits do we have? And then we would create a checklist and then that at least once a week that person would do periodic checks throughout the whole county on on different logging permits. This person would also be able, we would have in our group chat with the deputies, if the deputy sees a logging operation on County Road 65, they can shoot this person a text and say, hey, is there a logging permit on County Road 65? If there is, then good. If there's not, this person could follow up with Lee and follow up with proper procedures. There is a plan to, if we can do this, for this person to establish some guidelines with you guys and Lee uh, to be able to make them a little bit more responsible for, you know, damaging things and uh, cleaning up the roadway. And I'm not talking about fining them or anything. I hope if it comes down to if we might need that. I'm not talking about just giving them warnings and being able to have something in writing. Um, our deputies are so busy right now, there's just no way that we could we could give that to them. And, and the biggest concern to me is in the winter logs. It's when we have so many logs. And these Georgia logs. I'm continuing to call him Lee on a daily basis. He doesn't have time to run up to check everyone. I don't know about you guys, but I have problems. No, they call the office all the time, do you? I personally, my district, I don't have any issues. We, we get a lot of calls all over the county, including Grammar. But now, Ms. Cobb, you want to put this on your business? Yes. Okay. What's well, um, Does this person, I mean, it's going to be a clerk. Can they write a ticket? Do they carry a gun? Can they arrest somebody? It's it's not going to be like a, uh, it'd be kind of like a, a gym. Basically. It'd be a reserve. It, yes. he, John could swear him in as a reserve deputy just because they are an employee and they could act under the sheriff on certain things. Um, but so they're, they're not going to need a vehicle to 
Well, and we're not asking for that. Uh, but but at some point he's going to need a vehicle. Well, but the thing, you know, we're not going to need that vehicle updated like everybody else. We could actually use one of our older vehicles. It's not going to be something that's going to be ripping and running up down the road, patrol, chasing vehicles, answering calls. I mean, I understand that it is going to be something that's going to cost money. Well, I, I mean, it's not an immediate, and I think it would be well on down the road. I think we could suffice with especially getting that grant. It, it, it's to the point that whether we want to realize it or not, and in it, like I said, it's came and seen firsthand. And Carrie, I showed you pictures. Uh, you know, it, I've seen it. I've been out. It, it, it's we're in a mess all the way around, and, and I don't have enough time to get to it because of everything that's going on. John can't, and the way the evidence and the custodian of the custodial laws of evidence, we can't just let anybody come in and out of there. Um, well, if, if this person is not a deputy. How does that affect the change? As long as they're an employee and they're the only sole person that has control of that. County. County, County, they use the jailer. They got the jailer they've designated for their evidence custodian. That's all they handle is just great yeah. evidence. They don't do anything else. And Oxford, very difficult to order to do this. And Oxford does this. Like they have just evidence text. Uh, Carroll County has evidence people. Uh, everybody, almost every agency around us has specific evidence, but we're not only asking for evidence person, we're asking for somebody that can help come in on many other things. Like last week or the week before last when calling Cassie was out, it would be somebody that could help in the office send reports and and John and I could okay. leave the office because we was constantly having to answer phone and send reports to the clerk's office. And it, it's much more than what what we realize and it would be a great help at a lower cost than what a certified person. And that's like most of the time we have like our evidence tech now, which is a, a road guy. I mean, if they come in to do evidence, it's usually on their shift. Well, if they get a call, well, they got to pack everything up. No matter how they did, yeah, no matter, yeah, no matter how they did, it's a murder. They got to pack everything up, stick it back in that office, and lock it before they ever leave the office. And two, it costs us overtime. If they come in over overtime. And, and we're going to soon come to, to find a, a point where the deputies is not going to be willing to do this and we're going to be up free. But, but they don't get no extra money to do it. It's just a title, that's what. So we have it on the agenda for new business and we'll vote on it in uh, two weeks. Uh, any other questions concerning this? Seems very logical, seems like a I understand where you want to go and why it's needed. And uh, we've got it on the agenda. Anything else, John? Y'all yeah, have, okay. have any other questions for, for John? And I know I'm pushing. I don't no, push you're good. You're good. I know we've got a lot of ground to cover. So I'm happy to be the bad guy for that. Ms. Fuller. Do you want me to go first? No, he wants to talk about his budget. Yeah, I'm oh, like, okay. All right. I did, I'll, I'll try to cover it very quickly. I know that uh, most of y'all received um, a copy of this for 2002. The cost of living was given to all the elected officials except for the revenue commissioner, and it uh, directly affected my pay. I did not know this until we were working on the pay increase for um, the bill that we're trying to get passed through the legislators. Uh, found it on there. And you can see in the right under the yellow there what it directly affected me each year. I'm asking for y'all to consider to pay that so that, so that that's handled and I'm, I'm, my base pay is correct for the legislation side. Now, the legis yes, sir. I misunderstood. Go ahead. Anyway. The legislative side, I wanted to just give you a, a heads up. I went through Ryan's uh, position since he's been in, in the probate judge and, and took out the um, salary for the uh, probate judge compared and the salary for the commission. Y'all did that as well? No. Yeah. That's, that's from Brandon County and yeah. NCCO. Okay. So that just shows the, the difference in his base pay and the difference in the uh, base pay for the uh, commission chair. And taxes. And, yeah. 
So that, that gets you a separation there to, to show, show the difference there. And I don't know if you, you want this, but this is just something that I typed up to kind of, you know, you already got it. Okay, with the new numbers, with the change numbers. Okay, yes. That's got the new change numbers. I'd like to have that in consideration. All right. That's all I got. Any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, going back to the, to the raise that Nikki didn't take. Yes. We can't pay in the rears. So let's, have you talked to Jason about that? I mean, to me, that sounds like a judge might have to make a decision on that. I may be wrong. Okay. But we, we can I can pay. make that happen. We cannot pay in the rears. I mean, that's the way I understand it. How about everybody else? Thank you, Jason. And that's any past years in the rears? We can't, we can't pay anybody in the rears. That's my understanding. Now, I'm not an attorney. That's what I'm going to ask you to talk to Jason. Who, who has talked with, with Mr. Adam? Uh, that's, that's just what I got out of one of our classes that we took. This was 10 years ago for me, and I may be wrong, but that's where you're going to throw it out there. He has all the information. I sent all of this to him. He hasn't given me an answer, but he does have all of this. I, I don't want it to become a, a, a legal issue. I, I don't really want to spend money to fight that in court. Um, but it, I would I would think that it's something that you as commissioners can can make a ruling on. Um, that's just my opinion. In the matter. That's my opinion. In the matter. If I owed it to you, you would ask for it for me. Twenty-four hours ago, right, Joyce? That twenty-four is what we're talking about. Yes. Which actually comes from us and the school. It's right. Yeah, it would be split between all the agencies. That's correct. Okay. So right now we have the sheriff added position on the resolutions. Is there another resolution I have to mention? Anybody want to put a resolution on? Well, you need to talk to the lawyer and find out what. Well, I, I, that's what he's asking. I mean, you can put a resolution in it and talk to the lawyer too. I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm not trying to just ask him. You can put the resolution there and ask the lawyer. Well, you're not going to be able to do it in one resolution. Because the back pay deal is an issue all to itself. Yes, that's why I said it. Then the, the legislature is a separate. That's right. Either resolution y'all want to do. One or two. Well, get the monkey off the back. I guess we need to do a resolution to have the, the county attorney to review what we just got. Okay. He hasn't got back with you either. Yeah, he didn't give me an answer, man. I think he has everything. Um, I sent him the spreadsheet that I work from and the spreadsheet that Ms. Ford created. So he had all the information. So you want a resolution to task? Uh, the county attorney to look and see if the legality of paying uh, what was, I guess, possibly uh, turned down and cost of living raises by the former revenue commissioner. Is that is that the question, really, right? Okay. New business. Okay. Any other resolution you want to add? May, it may have one more year in there, 2025, to you know what you're working on, though, so it may have 2025 on that. And I would always suggest you recheck the mail. Yeah. yeah. This would be, I guess the other resolution would be to whether or not to seek legislation, right? That's correct. Is that my understanding? And that legislation includes the uh, the sheriff, myself, um, the probate judge, and the commissioners on in that in that particular one. That included them all um, in in that particular uh, legislation. Um, there, I think that it needs to have a note in there that it needs to have some consideration that if the county employees and John's told me this as well. And, so is the 
the new incumbent uh, probate judge, they do not want us to, to be able to receive that yearly um, step raise unless the employees receive it. So if y'all voted down this, the employees to get it that year, we would not get it either. So that really needs to be included in there. Well, what would you think about just making it equal with elected officials to what the employees do? I'm okay with that as well as far as the, the step rates go because that, that's in, that's really basically what we're saying anyway. So we don't I, mean, want... I wish you would look at this. Okay. Okay, that's five yeah. counties our size. Uh -huh. You make it more than me. Uh, yeah. I think they're going to make more than me. And Washington. the other yeah. is the ACTA of what the average yeah. is. And it's, you're making way more than they're making too. For a county our size. What? I see Hell County's more, right? Yeah, I think there's one that's more. And then Washington County's more. Washington County. And then Randolph's right there acting, right? Is that their base salary? Is that, uh, that is their salary salary? That's what they're And then Clay County's higher than yours. Right? Yeah, Clay County's higher than yours. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yeah. And Clay County doesn't have tags. Randolph County does have tags. Right. How long have they been in office? Well, that, that's what... Because that's based on salary. And so that all those costs of living or anything that they would have gotten, you would have to, you'd have to really go back and say, when were those each one elected? So, See, that's, and, that's, and Randolph County is a brand new one. That's what I'm going to bring up later on in the meeting to okay. tell some of our ladies will get started paid okay. for all those counties or whatever commission wants right. to get. But, uh, I mean, I... Just, I'm on board for two and a half, for 18 years, that's what the employees would get. Yes. Uh, I would really have to look at anything other than that. Okay. Um, and this is the ACCA. Yep. This is what they... Does the commission want to add a resolution concerning legislation at this time? Okay. You can add later in the meeting. I just want All right. to be Thank right. you. As long as we get it in there before, what? Because it has to be in there by. What is it? No problem, you said? It has to be in there by when. Yeah, you have to have time to uh, advertise. And because the advertisement now is every two weeks in the uh, newspaper, that's why I said it's, it's not something that you can wait too awful much longer. Because the legislature, the legislature is going <coughs> early this year. That's they, correct. They go into conference when in no, January. January. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sir. What we're talking about is I would like a resolution to task Crystal and Henry Brown with coming up with us some figures starting pay. that um, I submitted our information for and they sit back 
this email and then a document. Um, I told Commissioner Hendricks, I didn't feel very comfortable doing the document because it felt like I was signing my life away. Um, I, I don't mind being point of contact for that, but it looks uh, rather formal. And it's just to allow us to apply for those cybersecurity grant funds. And so I just wanted to kind of pass that by y'all and see if you wanted Ryan to sign that or me to sign that or whatever you would have. It doesn't obligate us to anything, of course. It's just us being put on the list and further information yeah, being given to us. The money is out there. They told us to have the money. <coughs> This is just the ball rolling. Yeah, just have to ask Ryan to sign it. Y'all need a resolution? Yes. Consent to do the good? Yes. Thank you, sir. This is Ryan. I said with Ryan. Okay, I thought it said Ryan. Is she not there anymore? Emily, Emily has something she wanted to do. Okay, I gave you all a copy of the step raise resolution. And during the discussion of this resolution, it was discussed that the employee had to be here six months to be eligible for this raise, but that is not in the resolution. So I just wanted to point that out to see if we needed to revise that or what you wanted to do about that. Something we passed? Yeah. I think what we need to do is say a new employee is their one year anniversary. It's where that the step race should start. They should have at least one year under the belt and that, that gets them out of probationary period to give them six months and then the department head can be able to evaluate them. Okay, so you want to pull that resolution and amend it? We can just amend that resolution to say new employee's step race starts at a one year anniversary. That was really good. That was really good. Yes, that's right. All right, so um, new business or consent agenda? Consent agenda. All right. If I got everybody covered, anybody else needs to speak? Oh, I'm sorry, Tammy. It's okay. Pulling it in, honey. I'll be quick. I'm sorry. I'm not going to read all this. You should have gotten your just your quick overview. Um, I'm just going to cover just a few things that I've been talking to you guys about. Just kind of see where we are right now. But I am going to be skipping around. Slow me down if you have any questions. Um, we are still working on the Southwire contractor contract with um, the real company. They are still looking at us. Um, I have found them another location that they seem to be happy with. Um, so we're just still waiting on them. So we, we give up on them. Our know, competition was Georgia. And um, so we really hope to get them to move here from Kentucky to provide that service. And this, this location would be very close to Southwire. Um, I think 35% of their reels will be repaired from here and the rest will be in Carrollton. Um, uh, on tree brand expansion, I have submitted the questionnaire to the Department of Revenue. Um, I know they will be coming back again um, for abatements. Um, so this is their, their bigger project that's, um, that's in the process that we're working with with the water tank. On um, the water tank project, we finally got our survey from Trey Grant. Um, I touched base with Chris this morning and then Josh this afternoon, the attorney, and um, he said it shouldn't take much more to get the, the legal description that he needs to get the deed printed up so we can get that all worked out. Have you, have you talked to Randy Price? Yeah, yeah, I've talked to Randy several times. He yeah. still has money for that? Yes, yes, the money is still there for that. He knows where we're staying and he said the money is still there for that. And he also explained to um, Cooper on that one. I think. No, Paul's on that one. So we're good. Good with the money. Um, uh, Dollar General Building in Hollis, um, we hope that we have a contract, we're working on a contract right now, um, so that will be a good building to be filled. Um, it will be more like a retail um, establishment, um, it's something we need, and I think that, that is hopefully going to move forward. Um, the fiber hut, uh, you know, I had David come, um, he came to our last meeting, and he did meet with the hospital board, um, he didn't get any feedback at the meeting. Um, he was told that someone, that Pat would get back with him, I'm not sure who that is, but um, just in case they're not open to that, we're also working with WM Grocery 
as an option and also possibly the property um, beside Brimer Circle. It was just that property was the first choice because there was already a road. So um, he was kind of eager to hear something, but he's waiting on someone with a possible order to let him know first. Um, the traffic study, I heard back. Uh, we did get final confirmation that 7-Eleven um, is going to move forward with the traffic study. I told him it was kind of crucial because, you know, after the end of the month, that money would not be available. So they're supposed to be sending me a contract, so we, uh, the industrial board will pay uh, $10,000 of that traffic study, um, which is great because even if, you know, 7-Eleven decided not to do the project, if we already have the traffic study for the next business coming in, we're not having to go back. And, and try to figure out what's going on. So we are moving forward with that. So that was a good a good thing. Um, we are still applying for the seat grant for the industrial access road at the industrial park. Um, this is a grant that you do not have to have um, an industry attached to. So hopefully we'll get part of that road is a two million dollar grant, and then hopefully we can get an industry attached to get the rest of the industrial access grant from the state. Uh, the main thing uh, working on in Heflin is the Courtyard Park. We've got a $25,000 grant from Main Street, Alabama, and several other smaller grants that will ideally connect the courthouse to the park. It will be more of a space, um, an event space, or just an outdoor space for people at the courthouse that can come and have lunch, or you know, like we're having the homecoming dance again. So it'll be more of a, a space. We'll have bollards there, so people can't drive through at certain events. Are you looking to close that street? Not right now. Mm -hmm. We'll just have ballers that we can remove because you've got hearts. You know they need their you know stuff. And then on the other side, the um, the um, they park in the back, so we don't want to close them off from that because um, they have the trash service, all those different things. So we'll just have removal of ballers. So that seems to work best for right now. Um, attended an air tourism meeting last week. Um, there are some monies coming through just for some trails. So we've got some ideas. Um, just with you know us coming together as a county and the, a city, some ideas of some trail money that we can get this month. Um, we just kind of got to see what direction to go. And out of that meeting, um, and I can talk about this with someone later because this will open up a, a whole other can of worms. I did get some negative feedback from our section of the Lidaka Trail, and I couldn't answer. I, I didn't know. I should know, but I could not answer our involvement with the trail. Now. So I don't know who I need to talk to, who's the best person to talk to. Probably me. Okay. Okay. We'll just talk later. Um, because I just didn't you know how, you know, I want to help and I don't want to get a bad, you know, whatever we can do. It wasn't, you know, anything major, but we'll talk. Um, one east. Um, this is, I don't know if you guys remember when there was core four uh Britannia was here and it was a four county um, initiative. Um, Jackie Lowry from Alabama Power has worked, she was actually hired to do this for our community. And it's a nine county economic development alliance. And what it is, it's, it's just enhance our region as a whole. And they have listened to us because normally when we have things like this, they leave out tourism, but they kind of listen to us smaller counties that take pride on tourism as, or as economic development. So they have added that. And I'm gonna send you all an invite um, to the launch, and it's going to be September the 19th at 5 o'clock at Talladega Speedway. And it's, it'd be nice just to come, but it'd be a great time for you to learn about this. And then if you want her to come back or the board to come back later, they could come back and talk to you as a whole. Um, but I think it's really, really a great initiative for us. And we've been going to meetings for about two years now. So um, hopefully um, your economic developer will be hired by then. And they can attend, and you guys can attend also. So it's September the 19th at 5 o'clock. I'll email you an invitation, and you can respond on that okay. on that link on there. I think that's it. Did I do good? You did good. Hey, I think Terry's got a question. Okay. And you may not want to answer this. This is a personal question, but I heard you were requesting to have Well, it's kind of. Give us a date on that. I'm actually, and not be, I'm retiring with the state retirement system. So I'll take the month of October. I'm not supposed to work the month of October. Um, but I'll take that month off, and then I'll come back to work with the city of Huffman November the 1st, if it's approved, as their master director and Huffman Business Development. Okay, and so I'll work 30 hours a week. 
So is that going to be, you still going to follow up on all this or we need to have somebody in place to follow up? I, I've, I've got a document, like a transition document that I started and I've got dates and everything. So I will, I will work real closely with the new hire. And we actually met today with the chamber director and we want to start having at least monthly meetings so we can all be in a know and have a better, our jobs cross over so much. So we can all meet together and, and try to do more things together. So, but I will definitely stay on anything we're working on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to our county administrator. What kind of resolutions do you see we need? Uh, let's see. The only thing that I know of is that um, I need you all to know that the air condition on the JSU side is probably going to be replaced from what I'm understanding. It's, um, we've got problems with it a couple of times in a row now because we're not sure it's repaired at this point. Um, the one that just got replaced at the courthouse or was getting replaced at the courthouse was like $9,400 and it was a four ton. This means a five ton. So we're talking about probably over, over the bill. And just, that just happened all right for the meeting. So that's, that's my And may I interject that means there's two in the mountains that have to be replaced. Mary Cousins. <laughs> yes. I didn't know that that would have been replaced for sure. I just knew that there was, we've had multiple problems here in the last. Well, we have had, so, in both cases, uh, an, an HVAC person saying it needs to be replaced. That yes. We're waiting to hear for sure on this one, but they just repaired it like well, a week or two ago, and they stated then they weren't, weren't sure if that was going to be enough to keep it ready. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to Fred today because I went over today and found it froze up. Mm -hmm. It was set on 70. Mm -hmm. And I asked Fred why is those units on that side of the building set so low, and even the one that's next to the kitchen is on set set for 72 and he said that jack state requested them to be set that low there's no reason why them things are running at 72 degrees continuously nobody has not sold in the house over there i'm just i'm just repeating what he said so I so I, I, think, I think i don't think i don't think they need to be no lower than no high no lower than 75 to 76 degrees you know if somebody over there needs entertainment we should be able to lower it to try to keep that place vacant you need, at to lock it. Degrees. Uh -huh. you need a way to lock it because if the way it is right now people will be able to change it if somebody's over there they'll change that i've heard that complaint before i actually walked over there one day just just walk just to go for a little walk and it was freezing cold in there and i looked at it for like 64. So maybe we need to just uh, pull the plug on them until there's a function, and then we turn them back on and there's a function. Well, we, what, in the discussion before JSU did not want that, it's my understanding, they wanted it to be monitored so that the power wouldn't be as high. Right? Yeah. And they wanted a separate power bill too at one time. They, was, you know, they were hoping that, you know, that was one of the end of the discussion. But, well, those things do have a lockout on them. Yeah. Things, yeah, they do. And, they, uh, and, they, and they've been taken off. Are they programmable? Yeah, sometimes, it, like, like if you if you go there just for say thirty minutes or so, you can I think you can lower it down, mm -hmm. and it will run for like to the time zone, and then it will just reset back to your seventy four degrees. All of these units were set, so after hours it would go to seventy four, seventy five degrees. But when I asked Fred today, he said that they're all set for seventy two degrees, and then I said, well, I knew it was going to come up tonight. So I figured I would say okay. we need why to. Why do you not? I mean, why would you not put them like on seventy six and you know and leave them well, until you have some? I'm pretty sure I have an instruction manual at my desk on how to lock those. Yeah. So if you let me know what you want, yeah. I, I'll be glad to do that. Go through the building lock. I lock every one of them from from here all the way over to 74, 75 degrees. There's Is no that... reason for them things to be churning like that all day. <laughs> then if, if we need them set differently when it's, there's a function, but I think there is a function fixing to happen over there tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. uh, see how that works. Well, so. is, the, is the keeping it on 70 or 72, is that encouraging it to freeze up? I mean, is that the problem, or is it just that the units got issues and it's just time and wear and care? It's got to be an issue with the, the freeze up. 
Well, the thing of it is, to keep that temperature is going to churn and churn and churn and churn, you know, mm -hmm. trying to keep it that cold. 72 is, is cold for a large area like that. It's too cold for me. <laughs> so, yes, sir. So, do we need a unit, or are you just asking for somebody to work on it? I think, I think that it's going to be a unit this time. Okay, we just so got working on a couple of weeks ago, and from what, what I've heard now, I just got the update from Fred, and he's going to get them back in and look at it, but they had. What was that, leaving off in the pole or something? Yeah. And they prepared that. So, so they were not sure that it was going to. No, no. Well, well, the system works good. I think we need to have to check that and then we'll go from there. I mean, it is, it is just something. I just want to be aware of this is an issue. You know, so, which, one, which other one are we looking at? Uh, the one on one of the 911s is a um, piece of the next period of place. Have you got none? Is there, is there any money in the bank that's good? We just got to the youth in there. We did mine though. It's all about me. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can get a quote. We can have them quote both of those and get us a hard number. And you're almost getting into a situation, just to let y'all know, same thing on vehicles. When we start talking about twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 here, we're talking about this later. It's almost like we need to put a package together and put out bids to come in and do these, especially some that uh, it, it's good to have uh, Mitch to come in and he, he's a competitive bid to make sure you know that he does it. But I'm just saying when you start spending, when you're doing this many units, it needs to be checked out by more than just one person. Going, you know, if, if you're going to spend forty thousand, I mean, we're going to be one, two, three, that's thirty thousand dollars minimum that we're fixing to spend. And I'm going to tell you over here, if we got to replace the lines, whoo. The lines go all the way through that ceiling, all the way across, and all the way back down the back side of the other. Have you looked at the one Crystal's talking about? I've looked at every one. Every one of them goes up and over. I mean, it's, I don't know how they run the lines. Are so I understand that, but do we need to appropriate money to buy her? Oh, I, I haven't looked at, at, at the ceiling. I mean, but if, if Mitch has looked at it, we're probably going to need to. I guess let's put a resolution to amend the maintenance budget to include that and then if we don't need it after you look at it we can just not vote on it. I'll have Mitch call you and if you want to Yeah. I'm just saying I, I'm saying it's fine to replace them. I'm just saying when we start getting into this y'all remember how we got into it before. So you're looking at resolution of uh I mean to this year's budget. Yeah I mean year the budget we're in right now. Yeah. But without she wants to wait a month. I don't think she wants to wait. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we have all the Is that system up here on this side where the door pulls down? Is that what that system is? I think, you know, yes. I couldn't tell you. Tell me where you, yeah, it's, got, it's going to have to be up there. I mean, uh, so you're you're open to see basically got, yeah. would you say 20,000? It'd be both of them? Yeah, I, mean, I just put 20 down. 20 down? Incentive going to be good? Everybody good? Well, it's just going to get us some hard things. Yeah, we'll do it. But, Cool. Well, you can always amend it once you get started, but let's say 20K. Well, to amend it, it's going to be on a new business. I tell you. All right, we'll put it on the. Well, I mean, it's if you know that, then y'all can lay off and not amend it. Well, then tomorrow, what I can do is I can trace it. This is the thing. It might sound like, like in Ryan's office, we all we have to do is pull the line <coughs> through the wall and poke them back through the wall and reseal. You're talking about. 80 or 90 feet through ceilings that's got to be cut out if we've got to replace those lines. I mean, you can't even see. I've been up there all day trying to figure out where these lines go, where they froze up in the walls. I don't know where they go, other than when I, they go back to the unit. So, yeah. so we got amend, amend maintenance, and we're just starting off 20K on consent, and if it doesn't look that way, somebody can pull it off and put it on the business. Is that, is that good? Just say in the resolution. Up to twenty thousand. Then we won't have to do nothing. Okay. Okay. Whatever it costs okay. is what it costs, and the rest of it goes back. Okay. Okay. We're get to nine one one, and then we'll worry about the we don't have a lot of All right. Go ahead, Jay. Um, the item that I sent you all about the Department of Youth Services—that was the resolution that we were talking about—and I sent it over to um, Jason as well. I have not heard anything from Jason on it, but you all asked me to send it to you. And I sent it to you after I last met. Email so that can be just go ahead and do it. Just signature this, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah
I think I read it. I think that's what he said. That's what I thought about you, you services. You services, okay? Anything else? I think so. I think that was everything for me. I know I have a couple of things for Yes. Yes, that's on from 14. I'm going to come to you. Okay, well, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I would like one resolution. I am looking at getting power to run after the district leader of the Bingham Center. Um, I would like for the resolution just to say that I get power to the Bingham Center because it's going to be more with the others. Um, on paper, I can't send it about $9,600 a year. Yeah. That's a lot of work. How much is it cost? About 9600 Is that me, P.O.? They started at it. Yeah. That's what it's going to be more for P.O.'s. But you got the money in the garbage. It, yes, it will come out of that dollar fee for the convenience center. Right. So, so y'all work on that resolution. Yeah. Yeah, the Bingham Center is going to be the same thing. Yeah. 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 Are there any questions? Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Uh, commission, I'm <coughs> talking about your resolutions. Yeah, I think you said you had. Yes, Canada 14, 114, <coughs> 205, actually. And? Part of 
there's an answer on that. So 66, is that part of the same thing? No, 66. Well, I'll tell you, you didn't get 34, 33, 33 first. And then hit 66, because that's the one we need to get down to. Because we might have expense. Right? 66. Maybe I should be talking to you. Or are you going to get all this done? It's all on contractors. But from what I've been telling you, it's. Have you done sent it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're we waiting on them to come back with bids. So is this asphalt or no, this, is, this is stuff that we're doing off main street. So I'm not going to do that. We're just. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we're just. Uh, yeah, we're just waiting on them to see. Because what are those bids going to come out for 66? They're coming to clean your cabinet next week. Okay. And then so if you can like that. 33, that's a gift. And you're going to use up that time. Yeah, there's supposed to be a new thing. You got any provisions? You got a provision? No, sir. You got this time? Do you want a LHC for the printer of 34? Yes. I'm sorry. I guess I got it. I'm sorry. It's okay. We talked about it a dozen times. I was about to leave it. Y'all, 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 I will say this. Yeah. I did hear the last time I was issued is that we're going to have a little bit more, a little bit more leeway on the floor. So we just don't have the names. Yeah, you're right. Do you need a resolution? Does they need a resolution? I will set the deadline at December 25th. Because I don't care what they say they're going to do. This is what we going to do. Okay. I mean, I, I don't, we don't need to count on them extending it. Let's just get it done. I just, yeah, you know, yeah. I just know that Lee Kush is trying to get the projects done to the issue here. And since they, they're not really considered obligated or done until they're completed, and it's September. So I, I'm just trying That's, to see if there's a way. That, that project is a whole type of thing. Right, let me be clear. If you need a resolution on, on a LTCF, which is the LTCF, which would be on for how much? Okay, you can put that in the with that. Have that be on your business. All right. Hey, so one more question. On the money that I get to, that me and Robert get to the chamber, uh, can we, uh, I'm going to have her bring an invoice up for the concrete and all that was for the labor of pouring the concrete. So she brings it up to you. You just try to check for that, right? She can check out the next day. Okay. So she just give her a PO number for that. Okay. Any other resolutions? LAPCF number four. Picture district is the one that hasn't been spoken for. Any other resolution? Yeah. Plan for not any choice here. Okay. I have one more resolution to our economic developer for. Cleveland County, and we will add the name in the next meeting once we send out the one we chose in the salary. New business? New business. Yes, sir. Did we come up with the salary? Yeah. Well, I guess we coach you both. And, uh, <coughs> so pretty much we just add it.
We're going to talk about her, so we'll yeah. have the total cost. Okay. Yeah, we'll have the total cost and everything, but I just didn't want to do it where. Okay. Still got to be stuck. And you discuss it. Um, okay. Is she working with zero dollars? You got to get money from someone. Yeah. This one we on the, this year's budget. I mean, on the next year's budget, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any, anything else? Any other resolutions? All right. Y'all ready to conclude this part? All right. We are continuing uh, our uh, commission meeting. From the budget. I'm gonna ask Adam coming up. I think you're in a hurry, Adam. Yeah. I do. He wants to go over his budget right quick. I just need to know if y'all got any questions about this big I'll be real quick. Not going out. Well, I will just inform you and everybody else. We haven't seen the budget. Yeah. Okay. That's what I have on you. The deal ended, but we. Has yours been changed or anything? Uh, there was a little bit of increase on it. I mean, nothing major, just some stuff that I asked for increases on YouTube. Everything being up a little bit, supplies and such as that. No, no major changes whatsoever. No, no minus something. I got a question. Have you been able to gather up all the information that we've been looking for as far as getting it into our archives? Old files. So, yeah, well, I've still got, I've got all of what Tracy gave me. I've got all of Benfield. what Ed Lynn had. No, so Tracy and Clement. Yeah, I know. Wasn't it Benfield also had some? Gary or No, there was some that uh, a lady was supposed to have brought me. Oh, God, what was the name back years ago? I can't remember his name. Anyway, those are, that's the only thing that's that I like. work on. I just like to make sure that we got it in the office where we'll get all that stuff. Keep, keep working, getting as much of it. Yeah, there's just a few short years in there that I don't want to have any files on. And actually, you know, back years ago, records wouldn't have kept as good as they could have been. Okay, we're ready to go down there. Which one do you want to talk about? I think he will start with the corner. Yeah, page 13. Uniform footwear is the first one that increased it to $250. Yeah, and the reason being we got, you know, with the deputies, uh, a lot of times when you go out, you kind of ruin your clothes doing what we do. So I only, each deputy's only got one shirt that's, that they wear on the call. And, which I've got a couple, but we, we do need to kind of update our clothing there, get a couple more long sleeves for wintertime and uh, short sleeves for the summertime, something a little cooler. Your, uh, He's going from 250 to 5. Yeah, 250 to 5. Here's what she's grabbing. Two feet, so we're going to change. That's what I'm saying. So he's a question. What we're just asking. Mm -hmm. Which one would you like to hear what it's called? I do. I want to change the file. Okay. We're just looking for an answer. I appreciate that. Same thing with the fuel and lubrication. We went up. Um, well, you just went up eight dollars on that. So. <coughs> and on those, if, if they changed like that, it's because I based it on what you spent. Yes, so far. Mm -hmm. But you still got, you're talking about $80, you still got some. So on the fuel, where, where we're at right now, he's it's on the cap. Where's he at on the fuel right now? Uh, you can just take it up on the Should be more on the road. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's see. On that fuel, it just comes right off on this card. I mean, it comes in every month. There's no guideline. I mean, it, it's getting right on there, right? Yeah. You got a fuel card, right? Yes, I do. I do. I use this about once a week. I don't know if I've ever served a whole car. I mean, I think I'm at 44 calls for the year on. From January to now. Uh, okay. 
and then I had about eight death notifications for other agencies, such as that, going back forth to the hospital, the first one, and things like that. Please feel. Is that 2207? Is that correct? 2207. So we asked him to budget enough to cover his bill. Yeah, so we might have to. So we need to walk that up about a week. Yeah, the argument's worth about 2200. Yeah, but my, I've actually gone here that estimated the name. Is that $4,000? Twenty-five hundred. Yeah. And on the other, I know uh, if you go down to the lodge in there, I know that went up from a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. The reason I've done that this year, so the Corners Association is rotating their conference out. We go north, south, or north, and then mid-state, and then south. Naturally, rooms are more expensive when you go south. This coming year to be south. Keep so I, I put that at 1500 I mean, next year I could bump, because we're going back to north, next year I could bump that down to $1,000. Okay, 1500 sounds good. Let me ask you a question. One time period, is it, is it, did we give you that data to where you was buying some stuff? Yes, and I did it? up that too, because, so that last year, I think it was at 300 and I think, so that year. It wasn't in this year, because your data, no, it actually went up. I think because let me go back and look at what I had. Two thirty-five. I didn't see any expenses for you. Two thirty-five. That was like this line. Two thirty-five. Yeah. I didn't have any expenses at all. It should. It may not have processed through you. I know, but it went up to five hundred. So because it was at three hundred, and then or it actually went up to five feet. I think that's what happened. Yes. Yeah. They went two feet on that day. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't in, you wouldn't hear the last meeting, mm -hmm. would you? Uh, make sure each year that we have our budget. Just yes. make sure that you sit down and spend 25, 30 minutes with our administrator to go over these numbers. Okay. And then that way, some of the stuff she will understand. Yes. So she's, she's not going. I got you. I understand. Why do you do miscellaneous? What, what does all that consist of? So, miscellaneous is bodies going to the Huntsville Isle, uh, body bags that I have to have, uh, if any supplies for the mower, like, or if I have to have a new body, like lift, board, or anything like that, I just buy that off of miscellaneous. What's it? What does it corners, I think, comes out of the miscellaneous expense. What does it spend on that? He's, he's 35, 34, and a lot of that, which you know, I've got two miscellaneous lines there. There's another miscellaneous, so I kind of try to, I yeah. just probably ain't going to do the job. Yeah. 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 4,000 total per year, and those two lines, because one was $4,500 for the year. So he spent about $4,000 before this two miscellaneous lines so far this year. So it has $6,000. And he's got a twin nose and budgeted right now. He's got. Yeah, we got that. Right at $6,000. Right at $6,000. And that could, you know, I've had more bodies go to the last fall talking this year, and that's $550 every time we send a body. To and from. I'd like to say one other thing. Once we get through this, uh, we had two or three trees fall on the, uh, the Chi Hall Regional Library this, this past weekend. So while I got that guy there that's doing all that metal work, I'm going to have him look at doing that 26 foot lean thing over them doors and, and then close that off so it can't be seen so much from the yeah. library. I work on get a price on that. I got that description here money or something. Okay. That's got to get done. 
But I think that was pretty much most of my increases on what I asked for. Y'all got I'm happy with that. Are you good with that? Everybody good with some of the changes? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's how right. it was before, just a little bit higher, right? So I, just a little bit higher than what it was before. Yeah, just yeah. increase yeah. just a little bit. Y'all have any questions? You know, I'll get to you. <laughs> okay, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good day. Um, now, just for everybody, if you, the work session is concluded, right? You, you didn't have another, so is it, y'all still got budget issues? Or, you do, I know we haven't discussed yours, but I, so we thought at least this morning, but I think we got everybody. I updated this yeah. as they sat with me and talked to me, and they were great on helping me see any little piece that my bill will off. The only thing I knew of that I changed after you went is I did correct your salary number because the SRO portion had not been for that. Right. So that lowered your budget just a little bit. I think we're down to as far as y'all talking to folks is number one in Lee. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, if they make changes to the sheriff's, we need to look at it too. We all need to look at it, but then, then, then I mean, y'all can always come back and question, ask them the question. Okay. I think uh, Lee's got a football game and he's playing in a little bit. So, so I'm going to start on 14 minutes. Okay. 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 This ain't going to be a good answer for a budget meeting, but so the 27000 is in there covering the monitoring, the testing. Right. Um, do you got to do something? We don't probably have to do something different. We've got a uh, one of the AI reports. We're going to do some. Uh, it's a corrective action report on where we went in four or five years ago and done all the field. So they want to go back in and retail code and have to possibly have to clean in more field and, and do some stuff for that. Just to, so so you, you got the dirt nearby? We got the park pit there. It's all the dirt. That's all what I just, so what are we talking? That's the one. That's what I've done. That's what I'm still trying to do. You got the roofing on it? Yes. We have a got We got full plumbing. So it might not happen this year? It's got, I'm going to have to do a tow plug. An estimate I got on the tow plug. And this is just from one company. It's uh, 17,000. There we go. Uh, but that's just for the tow plug. Just give us an estimate and we can always so go back 20, and we're going to put 20,000 in there and then if we have to bring it. We have to. You know, 20000 will probably cover the plan. It's not going to cover the work. And then we'll have to come back and amend whatever you want to do. Yes. So that, what is this one? That's in addition to the final service one. Yeah, 27 is a test. That's so you look at $50,000. Yeah. So then you come back and ask for more if you have to ask for more. And once that plan, once that plan gets put in place and know what we've got to do, then that's where you're going to get your construction price. So we're changing that to 50000 Correct. Open that hand all the way up. Don't sound like you do. <laughs> um, the next one, bottom of that page is environmental services. Yes. Um, biggest change you're going to see on that is on that miscellaneous at 199. Um, even though that says miscellaneous, what comes out of there is the disposal of tires. And that's just, when you go back and look at what it's costing us to dispose, and that's, that's just what the number's running, it's about that 22,000. We're, we're getting reimbursed for reimbursement as well. What, what is the reimbursement for running? I mean, what is, how much do we come back to the good this year? We get, well, we need. I mean, maybe we get fifty thousand a year. We're getting a full amount. Yeah. I mean, it's technical. we don't we don't have to dispose of the tires. That's what we're getting. Because <laughs> none of we have to pay to get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting we're getting full amount, and uh, that, that we can get every year. And the sheriff, we're doing he's saying that making sure we get them with all them all yeah. again. We, well, well, we we'll we'll okay. just just FYI, I don't know if I told everyone. But anything that's highlighted in there is something that has changed from the last version of this last week. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, from there, 
go to the bottom of 15. And uh, you've got the administration portion of the gasoline fund. That's uh, turn that into a release of that was just what they say. It's the salary for um, for your office and then also a little bit for some of I think actually maybe only anyone is included in this. Or just a small portion of their salary. Let's go back to the last one. I'm seeing this for the first time. Uh, water and sewer, I can make triples. And that's just we have to build and play, that's what that's what we but we added center to it. Okay, when we're done. And a telephone you're and a center or or on sewer. Headphones on sewer. Yeah. The other ones are on. Right. You're just asking for water? Just water. Mm -hmm. The sale service from 1200 to 1600, do you add some phones? Or? We, uh, we had to get a new phone, so the old one that we were using we had to trade in. Uh, but that's, that's uh, that's one new cell phone that they share between the centers that uh, Stephanie keeps at whichever center she's at. And, um, and then the other portion of that's the genius, the office phone's coming out of the engineer office. Okay. So. Yeah. Then you got no money for work release, not doing that? No. Mm -hmm. That's where you go. You need to come in there for it? I don't know. Yeah, here's the trouble. Yeah. 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 The wages went way down because they, remember we shifted that money around how that was being reimbursed back to the gasoline tax fund. Yeah. It is the same, but it just it just looks a little yeah. different. It's actually for it's actually for it. And then the health, care, health insurance, life insurance, all of that. Mm -hmm. Social Security. Every year. Even though that number there is down, it's really up because of the shift in that. Right? That's correct. Right. Because all, all the money that's being moved as a reimbursement to that expense is all in salary. It doesn't get split up between the benefits and the benefits. And those wages are still being paid out. <coughs> um, Lee did ask for increase on the uniform line. You remember that, Lee? You yes. asked for that being increased a little bit. So this the is the last minute. This is the reason you say the increase in the uniform since we started doing the time travel, it destroyed the boots, and I was going to try to give them a little bit of a boot so I can just get help out of that. So this will be like one year, bring me a bring me receipt and, and do some reimbursement on that because it is. If we get down that time travel, they're all pretty much tired. Okay, and this lane is probably 5,000. Do you feel right for that? Yeah, just based on what I've spent this year. Uh, that's just, some of these numbers that you see that's dropped is just based on, on what we've actually spent. Uh, you'll see it down on fuel, same thing. Um, the road sign, budget double. Uh, 202. Yes. Yeah. So what we're going, we are going to have to work with us. Um, this year I've got to do the countywide inspection on all the signs. And uh, so that's what we'll end up having to replace a lot of them to make them move the flexibility and all that. Let me ask a dumb question then. I've seen this over, over the county in several different places where we're bolting a sign to a sign sticking out of the ground. Yeah, that's that stuff we got to do. Yeah, okay. That, that's, uh, that's a result of not having a guy. Yeah, just temporary things. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 the thing we got to fix. Okay. 
got some of this and put it. But as we as we do that inspection, though, we've got some stickers that we're going to be putting on the back of so that we can track. Okay. What was you saying about the fuel? Just you'll see that number went down too, but that's just based on what we spent. Well, you know, with your line by line with his and make sure that he was okay with moving some of the things that I was recommending went down by the SPF this year. So he's trying to cut his lip budget down as much as he can. Is it check? In the end, I still got a written problem. Yes. 234. Hey, have you looked at any kind of grants for like solar or anything to heat some of the buildings? I mean, if we're going to stupid enough to give us money.
And that's so you can use that money for equipment anyway or what? Yeah, that's not, that's what I'm not doing. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, not to get into the forgiveness plan, but once we get to our budget and see what we've got, I wouldn't mind seeing to forgive some of that. But if you're planning on buying some crackers, you better learn to forgive something. Yeah. Um, on 17, I mentioned you got some three all fun for the top there. Um, that's where you just sweep. That's where we switch some stuff on 28 gas in there. Okay. With this equipment. Yes. Uh, how long does it take for? Is these bush hogs just set and hanging on the shelf? The bush hogs are pretty easy to get hold of. And the tractors are not. Mm -hmm. The tractors are not. Where are you at on your tractor? Um, you're talking about curtains? On your bush hog. So, the actual bush hog. We started the day mm -hmm. with both crews. Both crews go out to us. We started the bush hog the day. Uh, I'm good on big tractors. Uh, a little tractor with the ones that's kind of a cost of how to fix something. So those are like 30, 30, 40? The price tag for them, they're running 48. 48? Are you, what are you getting? Are you getting those in the house? Are you getting those in the house? I'm just going to run them, run them like that for our house. Okay, I'm just wondering. What horsepower are you running in the house? The seats for this are 70, 75, I think. Yeah. They need to do that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Getting in and out of some of these holes. Yeah. They get heavy stuff. Okay, we're just bringing it up there. Alright, what's next? Um, Seabury Road Fund is the next matter. Uh, once again, that's just anticipated revenue coming in. Um, That's, that just goes to. We anticipate that we're going to be down $100,000. That's numbers of the guys. Um, but that goes to some of the dirt road, some of these tar gravels, that, that comes out of that. Right, what's next? I just use, I just use work out and down and down. And some of the farm gravel is coming from money that we're giving to some of some of this next year when I do it. Yeah. So there will be money that y'all are putting in that's got to be spread out. Um, beyond that, uh, 18 down the wood bottom there. Uh, of course, we just got our county review of Alabama Act and the Federal Labor Exchange Fund. And uh, once again, those are just, that's the county transportation plan that passed in August. That's the way we do the plan for those. So you got 300,000 just anticipated increase in price. Gasoline, triple R kind of looks like a secondary backstop. 
And so we did triple R transfers, and it's typical that we would do triple R transfers probably we went maybe halfway through the year, maybe a bit further, then he starts needing to you know, do those tra transfers until he needs that money in his gasoline tax fund. Just to give you an idea of the situation he's in, we have not done one for this year in September. And it's because he has to have one. Now. He's got enough money in the floor right now to make one transfer if he needs it because the gasoline tax fund's half that. We've been for AP and payroll right now. So that's to finish out this year. Yeah, we're trying to just figure out. And that, that we've done no triple R transfers for payroll for FY24. And normally, like I said, we would have several, we would usually have probably six or seven of them done by right now. But then we finish out the rest of them as the year goes on. But as time has gone on, and he's gotten in a situation where his revenue is always a little lower than what he needs to spend just to get by. It's gotten further and further behind, and now it's gotten where this whole year we've not done any triple R transfers. It's it's the it, it is some it is some of the labor stuff, but uh, this just part of the patch of this buying liquid asphalt, buying stone, and doing it. It's just it, it's those operations. It's the part of the patch of. So you're saying what was two hundred and something? So, so the triple R is down, or is it just not enough in it to compensate the difference? It's not down, but there's just not enough in it to compensate. We're the reason there's none to transfer is because we're using every bill. There's just none. All the work you want done in your district, that's what we're doing. And then uh, well, on top of that, you know, we get we we start getting low in gasoline tax, and then it doesn't have any triple R transfer. It's like okay, so where's that coming from? But at the same time, he's using it in his triple R to his projects. Um, we've gotten to a point where he and I have sat down several times this year and literally gone through every single invoice that he's paid and said, okay, we could have paid this out of secondary road fund. Let's pull some money out of secondary, you know, just swap that expense around. But those are I took a lot more gravity. Mm -hmm. We've okay. done, done a lot more So, where do you propose to get that money? Or is that a lease that's going on? I don't know where you're As far as my funds, as far as my funds go, they're all tied up. His funds are just tied up. The only way I know to figure out where his money's going is if he's, he's given some expense mm -hmm. item yeah. or the, the general fund or something. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really tied up. And just from around, I understand. So, what I get coming in every month is hundred twenty thousand dollars. There's eighty of it goes to salaries. There's twenty of it goes to fuel and utilities and other stuff, and that leaves me twenty to do the shop, pop and everything else. And where that leaves me, that twenty, that's what I'm spending for it. keeping equipment running, keeping pot of factories, keeping fuel. Uh, so, what's that? I don't know where you want to take it from, but it is, it is an ongoing situation. And I, I see it. I've looked at it. I've tried. We both sat down and talked about it. What can we do to save money? Um, there's big talks about the shop costing money. Let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the money we can move to that? I mean, is it, is it any of this other funding? Could it be moved to the road department? Or is it just got to come straight out of the general fund? Or? That's the only place I know that it can that will use some of your um, rainy day money. I know that was well, like, that's the same thing. It's not a court cost. Oh, I know. It's not a court cost. The court cost. The court cost that the 30 that he's giving to the shop, that's not the court cost. The court cost that the 30 that he's been getting for that, that we were transferred to gasoline, that would help a little bit. It's not a, lot of, not, not a huge amount of money, but we. That's well, right now, right now, right now that, that court fee is paying for that I just talked about just a few yeah, minutes ago. That's the reason I was asking for forgiveness at this table. Yeah, I mean, that urgency. He goes back to the court, back to the court fee back in there. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Back to the court fee. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at a different one that you're talking about. So this only generates about one hundred seventy thousand a year, right? It's about 160 to about 170,000 a year. So if you forgive the 500, there's 500 on what he owes on his debt. About 50 or so, somewhere in the ballpark. So you've got a choice of forgiving that, which you're never going to get that other. 
So at least that would give you the 130, I mean the hundreds. That's almost two hundred thousand dollars you're giving if we come up with a way to forget the item. Five hundred fifty five. That's what I'm saying. Ten minutes ago, ten minutes. So you're using that money to pay down. That's what it's going for. And that's a big leg, you know. Five thousand so far this year. So I mean, that tells that's part. That's definitely part of it. Because I remember the word was, "You don't much maintenance when we did that." What? What cost? I don't get the leg. I don't get the leg. It's very little. Well. Roger wanted to get to the house. He did not do it. And that was still a stock story. In this, of course, these on page three, I don't know which one it is. That's three or four there. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Is it all of those or just which one? It's not m &S. It's going to be the um, <coughs> the one that is just saw it. Um, this. You know, I, I, I hate to tell you because I want to make sure that I'm right, but it's going to be the one. Forty-five. Forty-five volcano. I think it's forty-five. So that's one hundred forty-five. I think it's. I think it's so forty-five volcano. So that. We'll put it back. I got, got quarter million dollars. But but he's talking about doing a forgiveness, putting this back in the account, and putting him back on a standard. That would put money back in his account. Three, so, it's not going to go up. It's still $115,000 short. If you do the forgiveness of that, it ends up that. Yeah, that that's not going to go up. That's almost over about $200,000. I'd say $165,000 hard in your forgiveness. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, and that would be the first time that you would have been able to do that. Yeah, that would be the first time that you would have been able to do so is that not right, please? So the, the public highway and traffic is around 113, so that's, yes. if you give that, you're opening up that 113 plus. Yes. So that would be 241,000. Uh, 40, but how much would you actually spend on the vehicle? You haven't spent that much on the vehicle. You don't have to buy any money. I'm saying this is not going to help you with your general fund or your, your gasoline tax fund. And your triple R is going to, if you could shift some of that expense if you were going to buy something. Yeah. I don't all, know. all that's not, all that's not for the bank to be used to. And some other things. Some other things. So that they put them in the money. Two months. 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 I look to see what our transfer amount number was, and that is it. But we're only transferring half of that company if I want to drive now. That's only half of that. Okay. So the other half, the other half stays in in general fund. Half of it. Remember that's this, there's two different thirty dollar fees. Okay. They both go in that. They both go in that one revenue. Half of it gets moved to public highway and traffic. Right now. That's right. Okay, so why don't we just keep them all over? You said the other part just goes in the general fund? The other part goes in the general fund. It's traffic funds. That's how it's been set up. Half of it was going to um, gasoline tax at one time. But now half of it's going to public highway and traffic. If you do loan forgiveness, I would say just move it back to go back in the gasoline tax fund. That half going back in. Did you catch that leak? But if you, yeah. if you give, all, give him all that, the 135 and the 205, then he can still keep paying. 
Not the 135. I'm just talking about the, two, the 205. If you want to give me the 135, you can. But I'm saying that what we were giving before is that half of that 205 was going into this public highway traffic. Well, if we oh, did it's the going one, into gasoline, we moved it to public highway traffic. If we did the 135 and then half of the 205, then that's his shortfall. Yes. Roughly. It's about $200,000. 235 we can get out of that. That's why the last few months, as you know, the last few months, we're going to she gets a 20000 raise. And just not spend But we can't, what I'm saying, we can't back up. If we, if we stop, stop maintaining these roads and we're putting ourselves right back to the world's public. I'll be honest with you, I pulled back to them on the gravel and some big and just trying to pull back. So, are you going to forgive the million, half million, five hundred, and what you know? And then, then he automatically gets the, the, the $30 course, he automatically goes back, so that's 165 to 170. The court pays about 100. The whole thing. 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 The whole he should be yeah. forward. We don't need to use a rainy day fund if we just come to get it on two thousand. Well, I mean, Five, how six. else are we going to get any? How are you going to get? That's, that's I mean, that's, took money that's out what everybody wants to do. That's fine. But then the next time he comes back and puts money out of rainy day fund, I'm not going to do it. But you know, it's, that's, I just got one too.
why don't we just don't pay it off? We're going to be the last one. And let you not make your payments and then deal with this in the middle of the year instead of trying to deal with it right now. Right. But, that, but we do yeah. try, we do move the money. Yeah. The money. This hundred and two so we, back to him. We don't get the five hundred and fifty again. Okay, so you said uh, well, well she said you could not like a half a line of four five five seven line what? Four five one five yes, seven four five seven. What one she said high value. Well, one, I don't understand why we're putting half of that in general funds. Why don't we put it in the all of them? All of them. All of them. All of them. It all goes in the general fund and we split it out and send half of it to him. It was the low gas, we moved it to highway traffic. Half of it, I understand, was $30 for the fees and it was something to do with the fees and it was traffic. I don't know if it was something to do with it. I understand what you're talking about, but the moving part here for us. Oh, I know. I can move it. They just wanted to miss the new model. It's just going in the general fund. That would solve your problems. You don't have to pay, pay it on the 5000 And you're going to get another 100 something thousand by getting all this. Plus, you don't have to pay the 137000 They get you off the damn plug with this. Does that work? Are we in a resolution? Yes. Okay. Ryan, are we still in session enough to get a resolution? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we had a work session. I, we, I said concluded, but it don't matter. I mean, we're still, we've been here. Okay. Today. So, 45157. Traffic. Is still half of that going to. Okay. You need to tell us which one. That's 113. It's on uh, fund 113. It's going to go in there. Okay. It's going to go to gasoline tax. Okay. So, all of that, 100%. So, you understand the resolution? I think so. And you're okay with joining. You want to go and guess on tax. Does yeah. that work better for you? Yeah. It's a little bit more than overall, but you won't be paying as a debt with that. If it's going to go to 113, it pays debt. We're going, we're going to give you a moratorium on these payments. No payments for right now. Until we get so something. Yeah. Yeah. What we're saying is, what, what I'm being. We was trying to find those four costs because some of them may be earmarked. Mm -hmm. So we need to do this. With the possibility, you, you can go ahead and put it on there. Okay. And then, yeah, and you get a hold of Jason and, or whoever you need to get a hold of and see if, I, see if we can do that. If not, it is, I can back up and we can do half of that four costs like we're doing for us. I know that's okay. Yeah. And you might do something with 45 one ten with the court visiting circuit clerk that I want to say that I'd like to say that that's a check with that. Okay. Okay. Just see if we can do that. And if not, we'll come back.
they come back to me from Morton Spine. Yes. So remember when we fought the yeah, conference? Chris that Lane. session? Mm -hmm. That report? That you get okay. that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did not talk about that, but I did, but we tried to do it too. Okay, well, fair enough to, you know, so we have always been paying it. I said, well, that's a good question. Thanks. What about, uh, on what's this, uh, on the Vigo side? That's, that's it. That's the that way we're at. Was he contacting you today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met with Calhoun County. You know, we've been told it belongs to Calhoun County. That's what's that? We, we, we talk uh, but they're calling me about that they said you know, okay we'll call you back in the week and I said well I'll do it back on that's that's what we're saying okay. yeah. I think that's the same thing all right Y'all finish the lead? Yes. I know. If not, we're going to have to go somewhere. <laughs> All right, Zeke. Is that it, Ryan? Is that the lady? No, this is Tommy Axel. Who's that? Huh? No, this is Tommy Axel who sent a text about that. Okay. But that may be the same symbol. This is Um. All right, we're ready for Crystal. Does anybody need to break a minute? You want to pull the chair up? We're looking at uh, what you start with there. So if, if y'all want to just do EMA since it's, it's the easiest, if that's okay, I'm not sure what page. 12. 12. Uh, Bottom of 12. Okay, so the the only things that have uh, really increased are uh, <coughs> I was um, I was working with Mr. Smith in uh, Ranburn, and we were discussing ham radio operations and. Each EOC normally has a ham operating station, which is a, uh, a, a radio system that works when there's, uh, when all else communication fails. So he came up with a proposal on getting our own ham operating equipment. So if our EOC or our communication towers were to ever go down, he would uh, be able to send a ham operator in or we had discussed I become certified at being a ham operator. That way the functionality of the communication of our emergency response would continue. That is on line item 236 and it is approximately $3,100 and some change. So that equipment we would purchase, it would go in the EFC and it would be there for of course exercises and things like that um, until it would be not that I have found. Not that I have found. Um, there is another shared cost that Lisa included, which is our UPS battery backup system that holds the mountain center up until our generator kicks on. Uh, the batteries are out of life. Uh, there's 36 batteries, and the replacement for that is $7,200. And that shared amongst uh, the Mount Center. And I will tell you, the last time we replaced that, we got struck by lightning. And at this point, it was probably six or seven years ago, and it was over ten thousand dollars. What line? That is line number two thirty one, and it, yeah, her portion of it is is <coughs> her portion of that seventy two oh five sixty two amount is uh, nineteen percent of it. So her portion is also added to. Um, the 3500 that was already in there for expenses over the years. Well, we had 69, so yeah, that used to, yeah. Her, her portion was 3500 and now it's 4869, so it's yes. an increase. Uh, yeah. yes, and I did add the rest, the, the parts that were shared, I did add that to the other departments as well, their portion of it. 
What about the lodging and meals? So the lodging and meals, that is only the, um, the EMA conference, but my PIN certification, I have to have CEUs and I have to attend, uh, I don't have to if I need the certification hours. Um, like the ACTA conference, there's a winter conference in Montgomery. There's several different things that I can attend to get my PIN certification. So Lucy and I discussed just splitting that between EMA and 911. There's also a couple of Auburn classes that I can get to CEUs for, for communication and things like that that are just in general in nature I can get uh, CEUs for. So I've already signed up for one of those and we just kind of split the cost between um, EMA and 911. So I can attend the training I needed. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Back to the hand radio. Sure. I, mean, I know everybody's got a wish list. Is, is, is this something you think we've got to have, or is it just? Well, I think, you know, each year we decide on a project and we try to better the center, not only the 91 center, but the EOC. We haven't done any type of upgrading in the EOC in a very long time. I feel like, um, yes. Um, and I only say that because we have had times where everything goes down. Um, neighboring counties, Calhoun, have, have used their hand radio operators um, on you know, several occasions to communicate with their emergency responders. I feel like it would be an investment, and um, I know the cost is a little much, but um, like I said, they are willing to send their own person in, our EOC, if and when need it, so that's a lot of help to us because of our small staff. But I feel like it's critical to have backup systems for each of our communications, especially our tower locations. You know, they're getting older and you know, that. So. Okay. So. It is very. Do you have to have a license? You do you have to have some type of certification. Like I said, he had um, told me he could get me a certified in it. I just haven't had the time yet. But his operators will be the ones that. We use originally in the beginning until I can get that certification. And it's not unlike any other person we bring into the EOC, you know, that we need some assistance with for uh, I mean, I know it ain't much money, but the bank service charges, I, I don't see why we need to pick a line. But we get getting bank service charges, then somebody needs to be written up. No, we have not had any. We have not had so yeah, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but I just don't see the purpose of it. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys remember, <coughs> the 207, that is a holding. I do not use that line until we need it. Um, remember the 207, we put that in there for um, safety supplies, for COVID, for masks and stuff, and we've decided each year to leave that in there in case we have something else come up. But I will not use that. And
Because so that's the difference of your grand total. But that's not completely accurate because I'm still holding that. There's still that part time that, so it's about half of that. So, so you're eliminating the part time yes. and going to the full time. Yes. So you yeah. said, you know, about 20, yeah. what, about 26,000? Yes, about half of that. So I, I, I didn't understand that part. I had a resolution to do that. And it's just because, you know, we, we're always going to need to hold tent slots because of sicknesses and emergencies and things like that. And we don't mind doing that with a lot of our previous employees that like to say, hey, you have something come up. They're already trained, already certified. So we like to hold those. You know, we saw it in COVID. We needed extra people to cover sicknesses. So, but it's so hard to have anybody part time. They can't commit to the hours, they can't commit because they have to have other jobs. And we understand that. So I just feel like it's, it's easy. It's supposed to buy another 21,000, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so we need to do a resolution? Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. you put the resolution on there for transfer for a part time? Yeah. I don't know how you get a part time for running. I mean, I, I go in there every once in a while, but. By doing this, we're not going to have somebody standing around that's not going to no. be sitting at a desk. No. We usually always have somebody in training. Always. Because their training takes, we, we tell them it takes six months to get them completely trained. So sometimes you'll come in and you'll see three people, but it'll, they're always working on a project. We always have GIS projects we're working on. Um, but this full time will be, it'll probably be a good idea to use that position to grow and do training. So they can train on days and Sundays and nights is what I can intend. It's something you do every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it been fit doing it now though starting now? Or is it need to start with the Oh the new budget would be fine. Yeah, but yeah, we, be so it's just it's just hard to find somebody to hire part time. So I don't know that you need resolution yet. Okay. So we already know what the you should do it part of this would be part of the budget, right? Yeah. Just changing the uh, your um, four chart. Yeah. I think when we when we pass the budget, we'll pass the full time person at the same time. You disagree? I disagree. I think if you're doing personnel, they need to be a resolution. I mean, I, I'm okay. With whatever you want to do, but I, I just say I, I think in the past that we've done it. Part of the well, what, what it is, it's a job that's already been established. Well, that's why we're creating a new job. Wait, but you are. It's a full time job. It's a part time I job. I think, Ryan, it would also be to be an out of one board resolution. Right. Yeah. We can chase to do that. I mean, we can vote on it. I mean, it's not going to start in October. I mean, we can vote on it. At this lunch, and then it would take effect October 1. Now, but now she's asking me a question should this be part of 911 board? And I, I'm guessing so. Yeah. So we can do that next week. About two weeks. That you're 911 board. Right? Yeah. Right. I, mean, I still think you need a resolution. Whether it's 911 or, or commission. But I think, yes. But, but I think it's okay to go ahead and add that resolution to the 911. Meetings at this is a work session. Okay. In conjunction with, I mean, we're doing two things at once here. Okay, what else? Um, let's see. A legal service. The only other major change was, of course, the 231. That was some projects. No, Lisa, I think that's where I had added the full amount in, isn't it? That's right. Oh, that 231? We had, we had the whole amount of your generator batteries on that, and I corrected that, and it has only got 2000 in there plus the 19% of your battery cost. Okay, so I'm sure if you look at uh, 211 as well, 211. <clears throat> Contain three requests in there in the narrative. 
so I asked for a new laptop um, and got a quote for it. That is separated. It's heat related. So uh, the quote on it was like twenty four hundred and something dollars because it has a dock on it. Um, on our nine one one stations, our monitors are um, going out one by one, of course, because they stay on all the time. So to replace our sixteen monitors just for our uh, set up it's like forty eight hundred dollars but what we have is I just ordered an arm off of Amazon previously and so if you tilt if you mess with one of the monitors all the four like fall over so I requested um, a new updated mechanism for the monitor arms and it was twelve hundred so that's about six thousand dollars with new monitors and the arms to hold the monitors for the three stations. That's going to be two of them. Yes, as well as the twenty-four hundred dollars on a replacement of my laptop. Yes. No, that one is included too. That's why that amount is significant. Well, she's got that under recommendation. The eleven thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. That's so, just why it went up from three thousand last year to eleven five this year. It's significantly higher, and she's got the breakdown of why she could increase those. But the um, the line two thirty one that she was looking at a minute ago, that one has gone down some because we took a port a big chunk out of that. So those are so that's resolved, then, right? Share. So that's resolved. No, she split it differently than I had. Yeah. The question is, is it going to work? Okay, your request is 84, but she's not giving it to you. So do you need that money? No, I had just yeah, I had just put all of the UPS replacement in that line because I I'm not gonna break it out. But she put the right amounts. Yeah, it's spread out amongst other budgets and basically. It's, it's still existing. <coughs> okay, the next one, if you will take a look at my um, uh, 254 on telephone services, we usually pay about $30,000 in telephone service fees. And Lisa and I looked at it, and this year it appears that we're only going to spend about $15,000 to $17,000. We left 20 in there just to be on the safe side because I don't want to, of course, go over budget at all. But we saved a lot of money on that line item. And uh, 264, 265, the lodging, the meeting, that's the that's the certification training hours. And then, what is the last one? Oh, I wanted to make note to you guys. I applied for a grant uh, with the state board for um, a piece of equipment that uh, they are recommending we have. It was like 200 and Sixty something thousand dollars. Within that grant, I requested five years of maintenance, which is about eleven thousand dollars that we would save a year. So we are hopeful that we will get that grant, and our budget will then be <coughs> about eleven thousand dollars um, because I would get that maintenance in with that those grant funds. So. so, so at the end of the day, you was. Uh, we're at we're still at uh, eighteen thousand dollars less than we looked last year. Even adding that full time employee guys. Well, that's because we don't have a big hit for you this year. That's a big chunk of it right there. We're she not doing that. She's saving us money. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I, my apologies. My apologies. I'm gonna have to backtrack. We didn't also include the second and last supervisor position, which is about a thousand dollar increase. So we take one of our now right. full time and just promote them to supervisor. That's what the case study recommended. Yeah. So I apologize. I, I just saw the note on my narrative. So you got two supervisors? We'll have two supervisors. Um, one of them will be training, the other one will probably be GIS. We have a lot of address and map work being done. So. Are you, sorry. are you still sitting on some money that's not in the budget? Am I what now? Sitting on some money that's not in the budget. You no. Know, at one time you had about a quarter million dollars and you still got that. Not that much. You are, but you do have some. I do have some, yes. How much is it? 
who I want to say three. Last time we looked, about three twenty or three forty something. But of course, finance can get you a better number than I can. That's just what I recall. I work out some round figures. So see someone has to get down to the feeding out of it. I see. Okay, I see certainly all it takes. It's got that local walls, and you can go in there and check out the each, and it kind of, if you'll jump on it, it'll tell you what the money can be used for. <clears throat> some of it is earmarked only for the jail, some of it's earmarked. It goes to general fund, but it can only be used for the jail. So, I mean, just kind of look at it. Okay, so you talk about the, the one to split. Yeah. We were just going to do 100, so we can't do the people. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying y'all go look at it. I'm, I sent you that. There's certainly the court fees there. Okay. Traffic cases looks like it just goes general fund, and it looks like you can do what you want to do with that. That's the $30 fee. Was that money going to pay, make payments or going for maintenance or what? Do you know money? And what, and what time do you make payments? $30 was for was voted in to make the jail payment, basically. It, it says it goes to general fund to be used for any law enforcement purpose or something jail, like that. yeah. Jail. One of the thirty dollars. One of the others says just general fund, so mm -hmm. just be aware of that when you go they can go back and revisit that for Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But y'all look at it. I mean I, I don't I'm not I don't I don't miss anything, but sky all those court costs and if you you love. Is that else, Chris? I don't think so. Do you have any questions for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it okay, Lee? Okay. Can I follow up just a couple of little short things? Really short things. Um, <laughs> our extension <laughs> office has requested an additional amount added to their budget this year. They wanted to change their budget from the appropriation that we allowed them at $10,000 to be actually 75 cents per um, capita. And it brings it up to $2,000. I've changed that on here. Let me see what page is on. I just remember it. Uh, page 15, yeah. Okay. It's it's changing for you to look at it. All right. I know y'all are looking at that, but at the same time, I know some of y'all would want to attend the, uh, another meeting. Um, do you want to continue this meeting? Oh, we'll have to go. We'll have to go. We'll all right, so we have a regular meeting on, uh, what would it be, the uh, 16th? Do y all, where y all, when do y'all want to meet again? You can't be this Thursday because I'm going to be in town. You'll be in town the 16th? Yep, I'll be in town the 16th. Well, then why don't you just make early on the 16th? We're going to try here. We're going to do something this week or next week, and that way we might can vote on the budget. That's what I'm saying. I can, I can make it all morning. Today's the second, right? No, today's the third. So what day? The night. Is it 10 o'clock? The night at 10 o'clock? I can't, but y'all can make it out. What day? No. I can't be here till after we probably. So you're saying Monday at 1 o'clock? Monday at 10 o'clock. That sounds good to me. I mean, we can do Tuesday if I don't want to be here. I mean, I, I don't mind. I mean, I don't. He's thrilled to be here. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I, it'd be tough for me on that Monday. And I have a hearing it on, at 10 on, on oh, so the 10th. you say the 10th then? I got a hearing it at 11. What day could you do that with? Um, I don't have to do the Monday. Um, why don't you, I mean, if you want to do something on the, you want to do one? Monday and Tuesday. What about uh, after lunch on Tuesday? 
That's good to make it. Then then he's going to get one. Well, they are. So at 10, at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, what? 1 o'clock, good for y'all? 10. I don't know. Let's look at my schedule. If I can't come. Yeah, it's good. It's too late. All right. Uh, somebody make a motion to make a motion that we continue mm -hmm. this meeting for mm -hmm. September the tenth at one o'clock. Only about budget, right? Only about budget. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. You have a second. All favor say aye. Aye. Here's your check.